On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. One of a kind opinions, big name guests, the teams you care about every day, every, every day. It's the Ron Johnson Show, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it starts now. Welcome to the Ron Johnson Show, and I'm your host, Ron Johnson, of course, on location, but the show must go on. Uh, on today's episode, we're going to talk Vikings football, but specifically, have they gotten better? Have they gotten worse? since the beginning of the draft, the offseason, up to the OTAs and minicamp. Uh, we're going to talk a little daily three, of course. And then we have Tony Patterson coming up. Tony Patterson, uh, former gopher, friend of mine, but also teammate of Marion Barber. So he has some good stuff uh, as we continue to pay tribute to Marion Barber uh, throughout this week. And, and, and I'm sure as we go on, uh, Marion Barber's birthday is coming up on June 10th. So I want to continue to honor Marion um, as we go through this. But before I bring in, uh, or before we get started, I'm going to bring in my uh, producer, Sam Ekstrom. And before we jump into this Vikings talk, because of course we have to talk Vikings, OTAs, and everything going on, we got a word from our sponsors. Built Bar is delicious. Built Granola Bars are equally delicious, and they are here now. Coconut, chocolate peanut butter, White chocolate berry. Want to try all three? You can get a mixed box at Built.com right now if you can't choose which one you like the best. They're so different from the bars and puffs, which we've talked about before. They're loaded with granola. Perfect combo of crunch and chewiness. 150 calories, 15 grams of protein, only 4 grams of sugar. They are going to change your world. They've cracked the code to better granola. If you've been waiting for a healthy and delicious granola bar to hit the market, this is your time. Head to Built.com right now. Get the Built Granola Bars, three delicious flavors. Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Back to you, Ron. Yeah, and so as we jump into this, Sam, and we're going to talk about this Vikings team. Did they get better? Did they get worse? And, and here's where I go. Center, we're going to throw Garrett Bradbury in there. Uh, when you look at guards, I think that's the question mark. That's been the question mark, and we're not going to know until we get to uh, training camp for sure when we start to see this offensive line in full pads, guys going out with the ones primarily. Then people will start to talk, okay, well, this is the ones. But then, you know, you got the first two preseason games. You get an idea because then three, you know, now when you look at that third game, it's like, okay, well, who's resting? Who's not dressing? That's probably your starting offensive line. Then you move over to the receivers. We already know what they were going to do with that. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. You got quarterback Kirk Cousins. You got running back Dalvin Cook. You got C.J. Ham. You got Irv Smith Jr. So offensively, the only question – and then you got your tackles. We know um, O'Neal and uh, Darisaw. So offensively, they were kind of set. It was really just the guards. And I honestly and – and again, maybe I'm just uh, ignorant to this, but I feel like a new system – a coach that's willing to help the offensive line by allowing the quarterback to get out of bad run plays, bad pass plays, uh, when your guards and your center is compromised, not just running the play. You know, like if Aaron Donald is is head up on your guard and he's one on one, and you're like, ah, oh, this is probably not the best time to run this play. You can check out and run a tall sweep or something just to get away from Aaron Donald. Um, you know, Akeem Hicks, we saw that numerous times where he just was bullying the center and guards. Um, I feel like that can change defensively. You know, cornerbacks, Patrick Peterson, you got Shannon Sullivan. Uh, you know, you add Daniil Hunter back now. He's healthy. You bring in Zadarius Smith. Uh, you still have a DJ Wanham in there. You still have James Lynch. Uh, you add a guy by Zezi Atamewu out of Minnesota who can be kind of a, a move guy. Uh, linebackers, you got Kendricks. You got Hicks. I mean, I, I feel like, and then safeties, I think you added Lewis Seen, which is a huge piece. Where I go with this is I think they've gotten better because you added a safety. You got the corners with um, Andrew Booth Jr. Uh, and then you also grabbed the guy out of uh, Missouri. And then you grabbed Shannon Sullivan to be your nickel. Uh, I, I truly believe they've gotten better. Um, from an offensive standpoint, they've gotten a new voice, gotten better. Defensively, they change. Now, change doesn't always mean better, but I think you're not going to see the same stuff you saw last year. We, we had um, – uh, what's his name was on the show and he talked about because he played for 
uh, at Donatel, Daryl Reed. And he said, you can expect mm -hmm. a lot of movement. You can expect a lot of, you know, stuff. He's going to, he's never going to look the same. He's going to try to confuse the offense. That's what we want. We know Zimmer did that, but now you do it from a different look. So honestly, I think they have gotten better. How much better? I mean, we'll have to see. Yeah, because a lot of those new players that they did bring in, they exchanged a player from last year's team. So they bring in Harrison Phillips, great pickup. They lose Michael Pierce. You know, you bring in Shannon Sullivan, you lose Mackenzie Alexander. You bring in Lewis Seen, and and you you think you're going to rely on Cam Bynum, but you lost Xavier Woods, um, Anthony Barr gone, Jordan Hicks in. So you really exchanged a lot of these players, but. By default, Ron, it's hard to get a lot worse than the defense was last year. I think it was 31st in points allowed. It was bad. or Maybe it might have been yards. 31st in yards against. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> I mean, if you just show up on Sundays and roll the dice, you can probably luck into a better result than that. So you've shuffled the deck. You've got new voices and some new talent on that defense, and you're just trying to get to that league average mark. Offensively, you're basically the same. You know, you've got Irv Smith healthy. That's a, that's a good thing. You still have questions on the offensive line. That's not great. I still have questions about that. So you've basically got a similar-looking offense. Does the new voice, does shuffling the, the voices on the offensive coaching staff, does that better the result? I think that the biggest hope for this Vikings team is that new leadership brings the most out of their talent. Um, and they got to stay healthy. And, and we're never going to know that until the regular season really gets underway. Yeah, and and from a leadership standpoint, you know, Quasey, you know, we talked about that, my conversation with him, uh, talking to some of the scouts as well. Um, I feel like even that's changed because they, everybody, and I love what Quasey said. He said, yeah, we're different. I love hearing that. He said, we're different. But does that equate to wins? And I think that's the honest answer that a lot of people want to hear. Like, yeah, we're different. We're we're younger. Uh, our mentality, our culture is changing. Just like PJ Fleck, you know, change the culture but does that equate to wins? Uh, and, and, and the Gophers' grand scheme of it, they've gotten there. They they had some some big wins with Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman, and now it becomes a question for the Gophers: Is it because of the talent? Is that what made Tanner Morgan great? Great receivers made him great, or was it the offensive coordinator Kirk Sharaka? So you know, you really just don't know which pieces you know, make a great meal. You know, when you cook a great mm -hmm. meal, you can have a great looking meal, all the stuff you know you want, but then there's something missing. I think that's what the Vikings have to figure out. What what's missing in this ingredient, in this in this recipe to make this a great meal of a team, to make this a dominant team, a team that people are scared to play in the playoffs um, and don't want to come into U.S. Bank Stadium. They don't want the Vikings to have more. like when you when you have that when your crowd's involved and your crowd's excited because they're they're excited about the team. I think it all goes together because people, you know, Eric Kendricks mentioned that before, like, you know, they feed off the crowd and, you know, oh, when, when it was quiet, it was tough, you know, without fans in the building. You know, I think that all kind of is going to resonate and become like a final piece to the puzzle was Kevin O'Connell. And maybe that's it. Maybe not. Like I said, we could be looking at the next Brad Childress where people are like, oh, kind of good, but uh, can he get it done? <laughs> we'll never, we'll never know until we know. And that's what I leave with. I think they've gotten better, but we're never going to know. Until we know. Well, up next, we got Tony Patterson, former Gophers wide receiver. He's going to talk a little bit about NILs because that's a big deal right now. The transfer portal, that's a huge deal. What the Vikings can do, because he's a 49ers fan, but, you know, he's also a former quarterback that played quarterback for one day in college. He's going to talk about that and what Kirk Cousins can do next. That's up next on the Ron Johnson Show. Stay tuned. And next up on the Ron Johnson Show, I got a friend of mine. Tony Patterson, uh, great stories about Tony Patterson, former gopher uh, from St. Louis, but uh, I mean, he claims the 49ers. This dude's kind of weird with some of the stuff he does, but you know, what's a football locker room without, without some different guys in there? And uh, so as I bring Tony Patterson into the show, man, I want to appreciate you for joining me. But one story I got to tell quick about Tony before we get into this, uh, Tony Patterson was a quarterback coming out of high school. Uh, I remember being in practice, Joker Phillips, you know, he told, tells Tony to throw us a comeback. It's like a 15 to 18 yard route uh, where you come back to the sideline. Tony probably threw it like 10 yards into the ground. Next day, Tony's in our meeting room in the receivers. <laughs> uh, and the, the high school quarterback days, the, the dream of signing with the Gophers play quarterback was over. But Tony, I want to, so this is, I preface this. I preface this. I love you, man. You're my boy. Uh, we're best friends. But I want to, I want to, I'm going to start there. The transfer portal. 
so many guys in your situation going from quarterback as a recruit in high school and then coming in and they just kind of say, ah, man, you, you probably have a better chance of receiver. A lot of guys would have entered the transfer portal after that year uh, after their freshman year because, you know, they could still go out and, and get a red shirt or get something and, and just say, I want to go to another school. Um, would you have if you were if you could go back in time, would you would you do you think you would have transferred to go play quarterback somewhere else? Or do you think you're one of those guys you would have stuck it out? Um, first, let me say, let me start off by saying uh, when I got to Minnesota, they they gave me a ball fresh out the <laughs> packets. Right. And I never threw all my balls were the brown, dirty balls. And I could sling those things about 65. <laughs> I just couldn't throw I couldn't throw the new balls, but um I think you're right, man. The transport portal is it's uh it, it's it's interesting. And and honestly, Minnesota was the only school recruiting me as a quarterback. Um mm -hmm. so other everybody else was recruiting me as wide receiver or DB, which I've never played DB before in my life. But um to be honest, I think that might have been a, a situation where I had to uh, communicate with my high school coach and my family about, you know, the the transfer portal and um, how can that affect you know future, uh, your your future career down the road? Um, specifically here at Cooper, we we've seen um, how the transfer portal could uh, you know affect our athletes. We had a really good class, um, but they just didn't get you know the recruitment we thought that they deserved with all of the transfer uh, athletes in the portal and everything. So, yeah, and now NIL is out there. And you look at these big time recruits, like you say, you guys have had some great recruiting classes at Cooper High School in Minnesota. Um, but you look at the NIL now and NIL companies are allowed. Uh, you know, some people call them conglomerates. Some people call them trusts. I mean, they have all these names for them. You know, the 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 uh, forgot the one that Alabama called it, though. But, you know, all these teams have different names for it. You know, whatever you want to call them. At the end of the day, it's just a group of dudes who are willing to pay kids money to come play for the college that they went to or they're attached to. What can Minnesota? I mean, because you got Target, Best Buy, uh, General Mills, Land of Lakes. You got some big time Fortune 500s in Minnesota um as this thing grows because the coaches can't be involved what can minnesota do as a as a state you know and some of these ceos and vps do to help some of these high school kids you know decide to go to the university whether it's a thousand dollars here or there you know because i don't know what high school kids want but you know what can some of these companies do to help you know land some of these big you know four or five star recruits that are in minnesota to stay home Right. Um, you know, that, that NIL deal, I just think every time I hear that, I just think about your situation, how how much money you could have made back in back in college with that deal. Uh, you know, I would have benefited from from that, from just being your friend. But anyway, <laughs> um, I think I think that NIL here in, in, in Minnesota is very interesting. We do have a lot of Fortune 500 companies here. Um, but at the same time, I think those Fortune 500 companies um, might not mess with that NIL because it wouldn't benefit them as much yeah. um i think our like the locally the, the like the private companies i think would, mm -hmm. would benefit more um um maybe like a auto dealership or land or lakes or a um uh huntington bank you know i think that maybe those companies can jump on some of those the athletes here and, and provide a nice package um because everything is recruiting now you know it, it it's it's sad not sad but it's interesting to see how uh, recruits are now basing their their decision on the school, but also what can they receive by by coming here. Um, I think I think it's going to take a CEO or a, a a president of a of a company that's heavily involved in recruiting, maybe a Gopher alum, to maybe get this thing going. Because, um, we, like you said, we do have a lot of four, three, four, five star recruits here in Minnesota, and being that we are the the you know, the only one major university here for football, I think it's important that we put those deals together to uh, keep these kids home um, to, you know, benefit the program. Yeah. And looking at this boss of the NFL. Now you're a 49ers fan, uh, Kyle Juszczyk, you know, one of the better fullback tight ends in the NFL. And I think that's the key. Juszczyk lines up at tight end and runs routes from the one by one position at tight end. Um, Vikings offensive coordinator and head coach. Now Kevin O'Connell, uh, made a comment about C.J. Ham at fullback and said he's a guy uh, that they want on the team, you know. But people are like, well, the Rams didn't use a fullback, so how does C.J. Ham fit? And then you look across the NFL, there's not a lot of fullbacks, you know, like the Chiefs. And, and you look at all these other teams, you know, it, it's far and few between now with a true 
fullback, you know, two receiver, two running back, one tight end set. Um, in the high school ranks, you know, because I know you guys sling the ball around too. Um, one, do you guys use a fullback? But two, where do you see the high school – like are, are more kids kind of having to be able to catch if they're playing fullback now? Like what what does the high school fullback look like nowadays? Um, typically – the, the high school fullback now is that is that H back, right? It's that it's that tight end that can line up um in the backfield or split them out, get them back off the line, move them around. Um I, I we do use it uh a fullback in like short yardage, but it's our tight end. Um yeah. and I think that now with teams are going to spread offenses and, and a lot of offensive coordinators are trying to get the ball in space to to, to their athletes, um, you don't really see a lot of 21 personnel. Um, you know, you got the the, the great use check and CJ Ham, which, I, you know, I love watching CJ Ham. He's one of those old school players. But I think the game is evolving now that um, the, that that typical old school fullback is not really um, – I don't want to use the word needed, it, but it's not utilized like mm-hmm. it used to in the past. And, you know, you have these great – uh, H back, you know, you got Kelsey, you have, um, uh, you know, just a bunch of these H backs that are that are that can play uh, multiple positions. So I think that fullback position is phasing out with this uh, RPO and spread offense and everything like that. So um, you know, shout out to the fullbacks, but I think is I think that's <laughs> that's fading out. Yeah, you got Andrews with the Ravens, you know, and they have a big 300 pound running back fullback. Um, but but Andrews is is the the main guy they use. Zach Ertz with the Cardinals. Uh, you got Dallas Goddard. You, you know, you, you like you said, you you got uh, Kittle, your guy, and he lines up at fullback every once in a while now because he's a blocking tight end. Um, so yeah, it, it is weird to see that where even with the Gophers, you know, you don't really see them use a fullback like they they go one back, you know, and in tight ends like they don't really have a true fullback their guy was was more of a tight end uh who's now with the uh with the um the uh, tampa bay Buccaneers. so yep. it, you, you just don't see it as much um now we got to go to this because you know we've had a bunch of guys on as of late talking about this man marion barber former gopher passed away um you were there my senior year marion's freshman year when he came in uh we, we you were also there though for the arkansas games and the bowl games in the 10 and 3 season um what what are some things, man, that you'll never forget or you'll remember about Marion? Um, just first, Marion as a person. Um, you know, everybody is really referring to him as, you know, the football player. But just scrolling through social media the last couple of days um, and just reading what everybody has to say about him, man, it's just just him as a person is mm. – he's one of those guys that came in the room and just kind of just lit the room up. You know, he wasn't a very like talkative guy, but um, just his actions and and how he cared for people, man, like that would, that's what I would remember the most. I specifically remember um, he lived down the hall from me and, uh, and Wilkins and just him just coming to the room, just chilling out watching TV, just playing PlayStation, right? Like those moments, um, now that now that the you know tragic situation happened, I'm just trying to replay all of those all those great memories that I had with Marion. Um, and not only was he a great person, you know, he was a great football player as well, and 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 he uplifted everyone, right? He he when he was so quick to to get the get the limelight off off himself to mm-hmm. congratulate his teammates, congratulate the linemen, and do all of that. So it's a it's a very tragic situation. Um, still trying to process things, right? Like. I, I, I specifically remember Marion coming to speak at Cooper High School. You know, he didn't he didn't have to do that. He pulled up on us and gave the gave my team a, a great word. And, and this is kind of what he what he represented, man. He was just an all around great person. And my thoughts and prayers still go out to the Barber family. Yeah, man, it, it's tough when, uh, you know, a guy our age, you know, 38, uh, you know, but you see Demarius Thomas, uh, you see Vincent Jackson, um, you're seeing that more and more now where, where guys, it, it becomes a thing about isolation and, uh, you know, all the guys this weekend, we got a chance to go out, uh, Yuki Dozier, Jared Ellerson, Asin Osai, John Richmond, DJ uh, Johnson, um, you know, Yuki Dozier. And so we all were, were talking about that, man. It's about being around each other. And I think that's the cool thing about us here in Minnesota. We've been able to connect and, and just stay connected uh, through friendship, through relationship. Um, and, and that's the key. Um, uh, one, one, one last one, of course, I have to do this. Um, it, it, just like any coach, you know, you say you got 16, one tens. Now you got two more, get on the line. So I got, <laughs> I, I got, I got another bonus one for you, I guess. Um, 
when, when you see – because you're here in Minnesota and, and you've seen the Vordy Niners Vikings game, you've seen the Vikings Saints games, um, and you play quarterback for two seconds. What what does Kirk Cousins <laughs> – what does Kirk Cousins uh, have to do to take that next step uh, for people to really consider him as a, as a as a great quarterback and and you know not just a guy on the team, right? So um, just being in Minnesota, I became a, a Cousins fan. I think that he's he's very efficient, but I think uh, you know quarterbacks are are measured off wins and losses in Super Bowls. So I think Kurt Kurt needs to take the coaching that's coming. Um, we got a Super Bowl coach that's coming. Um, and I do believe Kurt is one of the top quarterbacks um in the league i just think he needs to get everybody involved in the game um take some shots down the field there's been several times i was watching the vikings games where you know the intermediate passes might work but he he, i mean you have you have the weapons you have jefferson you have Thielen, you you have cook out of the backfield i just think we we like i'm a vikings fan the vikings need to uh you know utilize that that those weapons that they have and, and allow cousins to to open up and throw the ball down the field. I think he's a, he's a great passer, um, but we need to see more of of down the field throws. And I'm sure you you know you you know that as well. Um, but I think Cousins doesn't get the um, credit he deserves really. Um, just coming here and and just kind of being middle of the pack the last couple of years. I think that he, in order to get over that hump. Um, need to spread the offense out. And I think that hiring this coach will, will benefit him as well. Well, yeah, well, that'll do it for uh, the Tony Patterson segment of the Ron Johnson Show. But up next, we got the Daily Three. That's three questions, three minutes. Stay tuned. Next up on the Ron Johnson Show, we got the Daily Three. That's three questions, three minutes each. But before we jump into that, a word from our sponsors. Ron, let me tell you about Sakara. Sakara is a great way to focus on your wellness. They are a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. When you're hungry at night, a lot of times you lean on those quick, easy meals, and sometimes those aren't the healthiest. With Sakara, um, they know that true radiance starts on your plate. They're made with high-quality organic ingredients. Sakara is plant-rich. Transform transformational nutrition programs are expertly designed to deliver real results from reduced bloat and eased digestion to clear skin and boosted energy and moods. Nutritionally designed, chef-crafted breakfasts, lunch, lunches, and dinners made with powerful plant-rich ingredients. Right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash locked on 20 or enter code locked on 20 at checkout. That's Sakara, S A K A R A dot com slash locked on 20 to get 20% off your first order. Sakara dot com slash locked on 20. Well, here we go. Daily three, three questions, three minutes. Take it away, Sam. At Vikings OTAs yesterday, you know who was there, Ron? Mr. P.J. Fleck. He was wearing the maroon and gold. He was taken in practice. He was crouched over, hands on his knees, like he was coaching on the sideline, just watching the plays. Uh, intense guy, and he he absolutely brings that mentality, even to watching a Vikings practice. But he was talking to Kevin O'Connell for a long time during warmups, and I, I wish I had a microphone to hear what they were discussing. But, Ron, if there's anything that Kevin O'Connell – can learn from P.J. Fleck, who's now been a head coach here for, for a decent amount of time. Uh, what would you want KOC to take from Fleck? Uh, I, I think the culture conversations, um, I think that's huge, especially with this team. And I'm pretty sure you probably talked about that a little bit. Um, whether it's right or wrong, we don't know. Uh, if this was a toxic culture, if it wasn't, if it was just players um, that are different, you know, not like old school mentality is no more. You can no longer – uh, verbally abused players nonstop. I mean, we're seeing it with Urban Meyer. Uh, some of the stuff he did, yeah, probably bad. But some of the stuff he said is just old school mentality, you know, like talking bad to your kicker. Um, you know, some of that stuff is just old school. Like it's it, it's just guys like Rex Ryan and, you know, the old, old regime of coaches. Uh, that's that's how they got their message out. But it's also was just, it was a, in their mind, it's probably like, look, this is what happened to us when we played in the 60s and the 70s. Um, you know, I, I think times are changing, cultures change, and so I know PJ is a huge uh, talker of that culture. One, uh, he can learn from a new coach in this state, 
Um, what what can I expect from the media? Uh, what is it going to be like, you know, good or bad? You have to be prepared for the bad. You can't always expect that, you know, I'm going to come in and KLC is just going to kill it. Like what happens when I lose two or three games or it doesn't go our way? Um, how, you know, how do you deal with the negativity, the fans? I mean, Kevin O'Connell is not L.A. is too much going on to care about every single team with passion. Um, half LA doesn't even claim the Rams because they, they still, some people still say St. Louis. I mean, it's just, it's so much going on with the Rams and then same with the, the, the commanders, you know, he was in Washington. Now he did have a little bit of new England in them and new, a little bit of New York jets, but same with the jets, they split with the giants. This is a city where everybody watches only the Vikings or Gophers. Like th that's the only football you're going to get. Like when you're talking about high level football, um, so they can share that. Uh, his energy daily, you know, that's needed in this sport now with these young guys where, you know, everything's about 30 second clips on Instagram. You got to keep these guys dialed in every second. So, yeah, I think you can take that from PJ, learn about the culture uh, and, and then learn how to overcome adversity uh, in this state specifically, because he's overcome adversity. But this is a little, this state is tough to navigate and PJ's, I think, figured it out. So, yeah, I think KOC can learn from him that way. Yeah, I, I think. Fleck has to teach KOC how to come up with a motto. Hey, coach, you know, you've got to have a motto. We've got row the boat. you got to pick your own. You know, but there's a Viking ship outside the stadium. Sail the ship. Um, anchor the ship. Something about aquatic travel, I think, is the way to go. Uh, <laughs> um, I've got another Vikings question for you. So we talked about uh, – we talked to Keenan McCardell yesterday, the wide receivers coach, and he said that he once in a while will show a clip from his own career in the wide receivers room. And then the guys give him a hard time and they fine him for, for living back in the day and, and, and doing that. But we had a good laugh about it. Anyway, I'm thinking, Ron, if you could show a play from your career to the Vikings receivers room, what play would you show them? Uh, well, first, I'd have to figure out how to get it digitally. Like, you know, back in 2002 up to 2004, it wasn't like it is now. But uh, once I found the VHS H tape, or the CD, I guess it is on CDs. Um, I'd have to go to Ohio State. Like, honestly, like Ohio State was probably, um, and not, like, it wasn't, like, great routes. Like, I watched it back now, and I'm like, man, I just was out there playing ball. I think I would show it just to show competing. Like, competing, uh, doesn't have to look pretty, but just get open. 50-50 uh, balls, go after them. Uh, Penn State, too. I mean, I think I had some good ones in Penn State. Um, but same thing. Like, I think Ohio State was just, it, it had double moves. It had power slants. It had hitches where I got absolutely like hit hard, uh, but jumped up, you know, like Mike Doss, I think hit me in the back and I kind of literally spun on the ground. Like I was a turtle, uh, my shit, you know, I was in my shell, but you know, it, it was like, that was a game where I feel like I just competed. Uh, one of my touchdowns was not even the right route. Like the guy jumped the right route and I just converted it to a different route and the quarterback threw it back there. And I like, it was just one of those things where we were on the same page. So even that, like being able to, cause I know we talked about that with Kirk Cousins, uh, in the past is like being able to improvise, you know, being able to, to change the play within the play, like Kyler Murray, like, you know, uh, Lamar Jackson, you know, we hear that. So um, uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, being able to just change the play within the play and the play is going, what's that secondary look like? And so secondary play look like, and that's, that's what I'd show them that that would be the game I'd, I'd pull out. Did you just moss anybody though in in college? Were there any any big uh, Odell Beckham like catches at any any point? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Iowa had a couple one handed catches. Uh, Ohio State, same thing, a fade route to the back. Iowa, uh, we had a couple. Purdue, I definitely took it off a guy's head in Purdue. Um, I, I almost got a flag for celebrating, but I yeah, I, he threw it. He was guys in front of me. I just reached over his back. His helmet was on my chest, and I just reached over his back, pulled it in. Um, you know, back then, you know, there wasn't any replay. So I'm not even sure I came down in bounds, but I think it was, I can't, I have to go back and look, but I think it was one of those things back in the day where if they push you out of bounds, even though you caught it, it's still a touchdown because you, you know, you were in play mm -hmm. when you caught it. So yeah, but I, I might've come down, but yeah, no, I, I definitely had some of those, but Ohio state was just a complete game. Like the Mawson, I mean, I might show him just say, Hey, this is how you run a fade route. Cause that's all I did well was run fades. So, I mean, I, I did a hundred of them a day after practice. Like that was my thing. So yeah, no, I, I, I would show them those. Dang. You played just before the YouTube era where yeah. they could, they would have whole, they would have every play of your career on YouTube. If you yeah, played no like YouTube 10 years later. No. Nope. Yeah. All right. I've got some stats. Um, Aaron Gleeman of the athletic tweeted this out last night after the twins lost 10 to four to the Yankees. This is the twins record against the Yankees over the last 20 seasons, 38 and 110. Yeah, That's a that 257 yeah. 
winning percentage. So one out of four over a 20 year span. What more can you say about the twins versus the Yankees, Ron? I mean, it's, it's the same story every game, every year. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the Bronx bombers. It's, it's history. I mean, you got like, I feel like the Yankees are baseball. Like when you think about baseball, it's the Yankees. Like, you know, kind of like when you used to think about football back in the day, it was always the Cowboys. Like they they resonate football. Uh, it's 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 a mental thing, I think. I mean, definitely pitching is is ridiculous. They're hitting. I mean, Judge and those guys. Like it's it's crazy um, how good they get year over year. But they also spend a ton of money on their roster. Like they've always done that. They, they like it, it's never been an issue to spend money on players for the Yankees. Like I mean, you look at when they had a Rod and Jeter. I mean, if the Twins did something like that minnesota would go crazy if they could get two big time hall of famers like that on the same team on the same side of the on the diamond but you know it, it's it's it and then pitch i mean you know like mariano rivera all, i mean all the names of names randy john i mean they went out they would go out and get whoever to try to win um and that's just how they're built like they're built for this they're built to go into the, the postseason their owners like look i'm gonna spend a ton of money because we're gonna try to win this thing and i don't care about that I, i'm gonna get my money back in, in sponsorships and everything else some owners they want to save. They want to be billionaires and, and continue to be a billionaire, and they don't want to spend a little bit. So it is what it is. They're they're just not, a, you know, the, the Yankees are just a better team. Um, they have two more games, though, so we'll see if they can find a way to get close. But the Yankees are literally, I mean, I said this at the beginning of the year when we looked at this stretch of schedule. I said, this is going to be the tough part. Like, I, I thought that the, the Lions, Tigers, they should have got four out of four out of the five because mm -hmm. they're going to have to deal with the Yankees, and they couldn't even do that against the Tigers. So this, like I said, this when you're like, is this a sign of bad things to come? I was like, probably. And here we go. Um, so we'll see. But I, I, the good thing is they start out fast enough that it might not hurt them that bad after they're done getting beat by the Yankees three times. Yeah. Twins fans are wallowing right now. They're very upset. They're very sad. But honestly, it's just the, the pitching matchups just aren't fair. I mean, the Twins are so banged up in the pitching staff that I mean, when your pitcher's going three, four innings and you're leaving your bullpen to try to patch things together against that lineup, you're going to get burned. And, and last night, it just felt inevitable that the Yankees were going to blow it open and then Rizzo hits the three-run homer and boom, you're down by four. So not surprised at the result. I'd be surprised if they win a game in the series, to be honest. But um, baseball's crazy. You might be able to steal one and then it stings a little bit less. Yeah, well, there you have it. Well, that'll do it for the Ron Johnson Show today. I want to thank you all on YouTube for watching. I want to thank those that have downloaded the podcast and continue to subscribe. Thank you for listening. That'll do it for myself and Sam Ekstrom. Join us again tomorrow and go back and watch the interviews. If you didn't catch the Tony Patterson or you didn't catch the Open, you can always go back and listen to those as well. But that'll do it for us today. Have a great day.